And uh, yeah, so I will be talking uh, about some uh, good practices and particularly about the process of sharing and bringing to scale uh, good practices, uh, as I think uh, many of the presenters have already provided a uh, very good uh, uh, information on some of the uh, um, techniques and, and ways that we can uh, manage this problem. And uh, the first thing I'd like to do to uh, get into some of the solutions and some of the options is to highlight this slide right here. So um, this comes from a report that we're working on with colleagues at uh, Stockholm Environment Institute and IASA. And it basically underlines the potential uh, emission reductions from uh, reductions in agricultural burning and uh, prevention of uh, forest and uh, peatland fires. And you can see as uh, part of this uh, set of solutions, these are two of the top uh, solutions um, in uh, Southeast Asia and uh, leading to significant reductions in uh, fine particulates. And uh, there's been uh, a number of studies that have highlighted the potential uh, emission reductions uh, using different types of modeling frameworks to show uh, what would be uh, the benefits of these reductions. Um, and of course, you know, many of these options include things like uh, what we've already heard today uh, from, for instance, Dr. Spot, uh, uh, the stubble plowing in terms of uh, rice cultivation. Um, there's lots of other options out there like uh, mushroom growing or controlled burning um, or composting. Um, many of these solutions uh, focus on some of the important social drivers of uh, this problem as we've already discussed. Um, and many of these solutions uh, also require something beyond uh, just thinking about uh, technologies and, uh, and thinking about um, uh, absolute burns on, uh, absolute banning of the, the burning process. Um, I think this is really important because um, in the research that we've done um, and specifically looking at some of these modeling results, um, we asked a, a bunch of uh, experts, over 30 experts, and did a systematic literature review on some of the key solutions for PM 2.5. Uh, this is in Thailand. Um, and what we try to understand is what are some of the key barriers to the implementation and spread of some of these solutions. And what you can see here in terms of controlling open burning is uh, the green and yellow bars refer to a more sort of a social uh, or institutional barriers to implementing and spreading solutions. Um, and uh, what we can also see from this uh, slide is uh, these barriers the green and yellow ones tend to be greater than the economic and technological barriers when it comes to open burning, as well as some of the other key sources of emissions in the region. Um, and in fact, uh, what uh, this uh, graph illustrates as well is that uh, the introduction of the some of these solutions without adequate consideration of how to overcome some of these barriers could actually delay their implementation uh, by approximately uh, three to almost uh, four years. Um, and, and this is over a 10 year period. So that's quite significant, obviously. So um, one of the points I wanna highlight is we cannot just think about the uh, technological solutions to this problem. Once again, we need to drill down into some of the social drivers and try to understand um, some of the institutional issues too that might prohibit uh, the introduction and spread of some of these solutions. Now, I want to underline that there have been some um, uh, interesting efforts within the region um, at uh, different levels uh, beyond the sort of user level, beyond just thinking about um, some of the uh, good practices. So for instance, at the national level, Thailand has adopted an eight point plan that targets some of the key barriers. And uh, um, I'm not gonna go into the details of this plan, but one of the key things that it does is it brings together many of the different government agencies that are potentially um, working on these issues. Um, and uh, in addition, it uh, tries to um, use different types of instruments, whether that be economic instruments, uh, informational instruments, so economic like subsidies, for instance, or informational instruments like awareness raising or peer pressure. Um, along with regulatory instruments like uh, um, controlled uh, prohibitions on the burning. So it brings together many different instruments as well as trying to align the interests of different uh, government agencies around this problem. So I think this is an interesting example. Um, 
And then another example is at the uh, regional level. So we already had um, Edwin from uh, uh, the ASEAN Secretary at MASA talk about uh, um, some of the efforts, especially on peatland and underneath the ASEAN Haze Agreement. Um, and uh, there's also this uh, Haze Free Roadmap, uh, which uh, colleagues and, and I are involved in trying to develop a, a new Haze Free Roadmap. Um, and so there's been um, some interesting efforts at the regional level also to try to, um, in this case, reduce the number of hotspot targets. And there's some discussion of potentially expanding the different types of targets and indicators um, that might be also applicable to open burning and might also incentivize the use of different types of instruments and the alignment of different types of interests. Um, so this gets me to one of the key points that I really want to stress and emphasize is, is if we're going to um, arrive at effective solutions to open burning, and I think this is really implied, you know, in, in Mrs. Doe's presentation, as well as Dr. Spott's presentation, um, if we're going to really come at an effective solution, we really need to think about uh, different modes of governance. Um, and one of the ways that we've uh, begun to think about governance in general when it comes to environmental problems um, involves this terminology polycentric. Now, this is a term that's conceived by a uh, famous uh, environmental economist, political scientist, uh, Eleanor Ostrom. And one of her main contentions is that increasingly as we deal with more complex or sometimes called wicked problems like open burning that have multiple different causes, and also multiple different effects um, that we need to think about um, not necessarily monocentric systems, but polycentric systems, systems where there's multiple governor, governing authorities or multiple centers of power. Um, these uh, systems tend to operate at different levels and different scales. And although, uh, for instance, uh, you might have one policy or um, one agency that's you know, chiefly operating at a national level, it also might um, uh, influence and, and dip down into the local level or also influence and um, move up to the international or regional level. So um, they, these different agencies operate at different levels and scales. And while in some diagrams, they might look like they're hierarchical, they're not actually always in a hierarchical relationship. So once again, local governments and local actors can have big influence on quote unquote international and regional problems. Um, and a lot of times these systems, they self-organize and they adjust um, in many ways and they learn and adapt. Um, and so they need to be flexible and in many ways reflexive um, so that they can grow and evolve with the nature of the problems themselves. Um, and so I know this is rather conceptual and rather abstract, um, but to make it a little bit more concrete. So here is a, just a very simple diagram of uh, what might be an, a polycentric view of the way things could potentially evolve and to some extent have evolved on the open burning issue. We have you know, regional agreements and initiatives ranging from EANET to the ASEAN, ASEAN Hayes Agreement and the roadmap and the APMS um, to of course the Asia Pacific Clean Air Partnership um, there are others out there, and I didn't go into international initiatives either, but um, you get sort of the sense that these initiatives, I think, can provide um, incentives and opportunities, especially, especially for learning and awareness raising, some funding to some extent, although I don't think they're necessarily equipped to provide, you know, huge amounts of resources, but can also provide, you know, some seed money that can lead to good local innovation. Then we have national policies, and here the there's big opportunities to integrate some of the sectoral policies, agricultural policies, air pollution policies, health policies, it would include climate policies there as well, um, and also to employ different types of instruments. So I think one of the questions from uh, Karma, our colleague at the ADB, was about you know, some of the subsidies, the economic instruments that we can use. So a, a good mix of different instruments, um, especially at the national level, and then coming down to the local level, um, we need a good mix of different locally appropriate solutions. Now, one of the important questions really is, you know, what happens if we have a good polycentric system where we have this type of um, dynamic, um, where there's some integration between the policies at different levels, um, but they're also reaching down to um, other levels and scales. 
And I think one of the key things and one of the things that I think was really important to highlight is we've seen, I think, very good um, examples of good practices, right? But when we have a, a good polycentric governance system, then I think one of the things that we can get is good, not necessarily replication, but the, the scaling and spreading of different types of uh, locally appropriate solutions and good mixes of locally appropriate solutions. So in many ways, creating this system um, can create an enabling environment for the scaling and spreading of solutions, which I think is, is really essential within the region. So um, let me uh, close with just a few key messages. Um, okay, so basically effective solutions to open burning are likely to require more than technologies or prohibitions on burning. Um, this is because of the significant effect of institutional and social barriers. And um, to overcome some of those barriers, we need a good mix of solutions and different policy instruments. And I would also suggest integration between policies, especially at the national level. Um, and then it also might be important to think about these polycentric governance systems and how these systems can align different interests at different levels and scales. Um, and this will be important to spreading or scaling up solutions. So those are my key points. Uh, thank you so much, uh, colleagues and Mushtaq for allowing me to present.